Welcome to your 20-minute podcast with David Brower, where we do our best to give you useful information in 20 minutes or less. Now, here's your host, five-time Voice Arts Awards nominee, David Brower. Thanks, Ellen. This is David Brower with your 20-minute podcast. I've always been a pretty uh, grateful guy, very appreciative of things in my life. But I didn't really discover what an attitude of gratitude meant until the summer of 2007, when I walked out of my doctor's office sobbing, uncontrollable sobbing, and I just couldn't figure it out. Now, sure, I'm a sensitive guy who cries over commercials with kids and puppies in them, but that's nothing like this. So I'm thinking, okay, in the last 120 days or so, I had back surgery, prostate cancer surgery, and a stroke. So I have a right to cry, right? Well, that wasn't it at all. You see, I survived the back surgery, I survived the prostate cancer surgery, and I survived the stroke. What I was sobbing for was because I had survived all those things. I had an overwhelming feeling of gratitude for being alive. For you see, along with the uncontrollable sobbing, there was a feeling of peace that I had never felt before. But I didn't figure that out very easily on my own. I stopped my pastor after a service one morning, and I said, Hey, John, I have these times where I have these periods of sobbing uncontrollably. What's that all about? He stopped, looking at me straight in the eye, smiling, and said, Well, that is a gift. And then he turned and walked away. I thought to myself, Seriously? That's it? You tell me it's a gift and you walk away? Boy, was I frustrated. But then, after a while, I began to get it. It was an overwhelming feeling of gratitude. So I began to wear that badge proudly, even going as far as signing off all my emails and letters with the words, with gratitude. In fact, I have a gratitude tattoo. But that's my story. The bigger question is, how can you make having an attitude of gratitude a part of your everyday life? A resolve that will bring you a feeling of ever-increasing peace and comfort over the rest of your life, no matter how tough of a day, week, month, or even a year you might have. No, you don't have to go through the medical stuff I went through, and you don't have to sob uncontrollably either, although it's, it's okay if you do. All I know is that if you do make gratitude a part of your everyday life, it will change not only your life, but the lives of people around you. That same pastor that said it was a gift and walked away, Senior Pastor John Smith, did a sermon on gratitude, and it touched me at so many levels I thought I would share some segments of it with you, all in the hopes that it might encourage you to have an attitude of gratitude, as well as you possibly can anyway on any given day for the rest of your life. What a concept, huh? Here are some segments of Pastor John's sermon on gratitude, used with permission, of course. Where is your heart in this business of gratitude? Think for a moment of the people who are truly happy, joy-filled, optimistic, and positive people. I would think that most likely these people are also thankful, grateful people. First, we need to make attitude a habit. We all have good and bad habits. We need to make the attitude of gratitude one of our good habits. We need to practice gratitude, even in times of anxiety and frustration. Here's an example. You find a lump and are filled with anxiety. You go in for tests, and the word comes back from the doctor that everything is okay. You are filled with gratitude. Nothing has really changed from how everything was going a few weeks ago except for what the anxiety has taught you, and you are flooded with gratitude that you have this gift of life. Paul said in one of the most misunderstood verses in the entire Bible, 1 Thessalonians 5.18, If we want to know God's will for our lives, it is simple. In everything, give thanks. Notice the Bible does not say for all circumstances and situations— Why should someone thank God for cancer or for an auto accident? No, God is not that kind of God. It says be thankful in all situations. Why? It means we can thank God because we know that He can even take the bad in our lives and turn it around and bring good out of it. 
Here's my suggestion. Take Paul's word to be thankful in all circumstances seriously. I call it thank therapy, and thank therapy involves simply writing on paper, typing on your computer, the reasons why you are thankful. So, to practice thank therapy, you need a piece of paper, and then you need to number the paper 1 through 20 and begin writing those things for which you are grateful. Take the list and post it. Put it on your mirror. Make a screensaver out of it. Put it up on the refrigerator. Put it on Facebook. Write it in your journal or notebook to remind you of the many things in your life deserving thanks. Secondly, let's express words of gratitude often. Sincere words of gratitude have enormous power. Do you know how powerful and encouraging your words of thank you are to the people you come in contact with? Maybe you need to speak those words to somebody in your life, maybe a friend. Maybe your parents, your kids, or your grandkids need to hear them. Maybe it's a coach or a teacher who believed in you, who breathed life into you, had dreams for you, cheered you on, and comforted you when you needed that. What do you say? Write them a note or make a phone call. Send them an email. Maybe it's time to do something extravagant and get a gift for somebody. Something happens inside our hearts when we express gratitude. The heart and soul of our reason to be thankful and grateful is found in Romans 5.8. But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God let us know in an unmistakable way that He loves us by coming down from heaven, becoming a human being, and dying for us. Third, what do you say when you go to bed at night? When God opens your eyes tomorrow morning and you are again given the gift of life, what do you say when you look into the face of somebody who knows and loves you and smiles at you? When you eat something that tastes really good and you are so glad for the gift of taste, what do you say when you tell your hand to do something and your hand does it? When you read a book and your mind is able to contemplate what you are reading, what do you say when you look out the window and see the mountains and the sun shining? When you read that God has given us gift after gift after gift, what do you say? Thank you, Pastor John. 2019 is the twelfth full year of having an attitude of gratitude as a part of my daily life. Now, that doesn't mean I actually do it 100% every day. It just means that I do the best I can on any given day. I hope that you'll give the idea of having an attitude of gratitude a try. Just take it one thank you at a time. And before you know it, people will see a change in you. And you'll feel that change inside. Just that idea, the opportunity, is truly something to be grateful for. Now, a special treat. In October of 2017, I was a participant in a Songwriting with Soldiers retreat at Sylvandale Ranch here in Colorado. Nine of us veterans worked with professional songwriters to tell our story. And each of our stories were different, and each one was important in so many ways. I worked with one of the most popular songwriters in Nashville, Jay Clemente, and one of the most prolific gospel songwriters there is in J.D. Martin from Aspen, Colorado. Give it a listen, and you'll hear how gratitude has changed my life. And please, keep listening after the song for an important message about songwriting with soldiers. Diesel submarine in that sea of emotion. I saw things I can't unsee. I had so many close calls in the thick of it all. I said my fair share of prayers. I guess he needs me more down here. Gave me nothing to fear. 
Oh, ain't no mistaking. Let me make it perfectly clear. There's a bigger plan that I don't always get. No, he ain't through with me yet. Doctor said I'm a sick man But they just can't be wrong I lifted up my eyes to heaven Started listening to a different song I thought sooner than later I would meet my mega singing bass in the heavenly band I guess he needs me more down here Give me nothing to fear Oh, ain't no mistaking Let me make it perfectly clear There's a bigger plan That I don't always get No, he ain't through with me yet No, he ain't through with me yet My baby changed my with gratitude and faith and love your love sweet love glad it needs me more down here give me nothing to fear yeah ain't no mistaking let me make it perfectly clear there's a bigger plan that I don't always get ain't through with me yeah. oh, 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 he ain't through with me yeah. No, he ain't through with me yet Oh, oh, he ain't through with me yet Oh, he ain't through with me yet I hope you enjoy that song. And, of course, in the post on my website at davidbrowervo.com slash your 20-minute podcast, you'll also be able to read the transcript of not only this podcast, but also the lyrics to that song. Now, a question. Are you a vet? Do you know a vet? Are you a friend of a friend who knows a vet? My point is very simple. Songwriting with soldiers is a life-changing experience for every single vet who has ever participated in over five years. Vets often show up at a retreat reluctantly, but when they leave, their life is changed because of one song that was written in just a few short hours. You could learn more at songwritingwithsoldiers.org. Listen to your 20-minute podcast with David Brower on the go. Downloads are available on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, any podcast app, and on our website at davidbrowervo.com slash your 20-minute podcast. Until next time, thank you for listening.